Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Rico's Garage. Where once again we are working on our 12 valve Cummins that we're going to put in our square body project. We've got the short block together. You've seen that in a past video. I'll throw a link up here. You can watch that if you need to get caught up. Now that the short block is complete, uh, the next thing we need to do is put the cylinder head on, which is right there in the on the bench, out of camera view. But the way the injection pump mounts on the timing cover, getting to the four bolts is actually easier without the cylinder head. So I'm going to flip things around a little bit, put the P pump on, then move on to the cylinder head. But before I put that P pump on, there's some things I want to do to it. And yes. Before you ask, everything that I'm showing you right now can be done on the engine and even in the truck for that matter. It's just a little more difficult. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the bench in the vise just to make an easier video for you to show you. But rest assured this can all be done, like I said, on the engine in the truck if you need to. This Bosch P-Pump is, if you will, the holy grail of injection pumps for the uh, Cummins 12 valve. In fact, there's aftermarket companies out there now that make timing cases to put this, this P-Pump on the 24 valve, and if I'm not mistaken, the 6.7, you can do the same thing with. Uh, my pump guy tells me this P-Pump can be built to handle 2,000 horsepower easily. Now, we're not going to go nowhere near that, but it's nice to know that building this engine, we're starting with some good bones. Remember in the first video on this Cummins series that this was actually the, one of the deciding factors in buying that $1,000 truck was because the engine had this pump. Uh, little back history on these pumps. They came in several different versions. Uh, the one that everybody wants is the 96 to 98 manual transmission P-Pump, what they call the 215 pump, uh, because it, the engine made 215 horsepower. Uh, there's some little toy, some, some different internals on it, the, the fuel plate's different, delivery valves, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff I'm not going to bore you with. But, just because you have one of the lower horsepower pumps, don't get discouraged. This is Alpha R95, the automatic transmission, which that engine made a pathetic 160 horsepower because it was in front of the automatic transmission, which was not desirable. But we're going to make some changes to that. Uh, we're going to change the fuel plate. We're going to change the governor springs. Get some more RPM out of it. I'm going to show you a few other little tweaks that I can do one of them now. Uh, the other ones we're going to have to wait until we have the engine in the truck running and driving and tune it from there. But relatively simple to get some more power out of this truck and not spend a ton of money doing it. The hope is that with tuning we can get it to where when we fire on this thing pre boost. Until the turbo lights, we get a little puff of smoke, turbo lights, smoke cleans up, and we take off. Where I want this truck to be, if we can be between three and 400 horsepower, which we should be relatively easily, and knocking on the door of a thousand pound feet of torque, that'd be perfect. I want this thing to tow right up there with the new Duramax, the 6.7 Power Stroke, I know the 550 service truck that I use for my job, uh, I believe it's, since it's a cabin chassis model, I think it's around 400 horse and 800 pound-feet of torque. They, they detune the cabin chassis models. If you have a 6.7 pickup, uh, you're easily within the 1,000 pound-feet of torque range, and I can't remember offhand what the horsepower is. They detune the cabin chassis because they don't want the fleet owners have to worry about their cowboys out there running with that much power. And they want longevity. Horsepower and torque doesn't sell fleet trucks. Longevity and dependability sells fleet trucks, so that's why. But on a pickup truck, they got to have that big thousand. 
foot pound number that sells trucks. Perfect. Let's get to work. Got our P pump locked up the vice, like I said. A few simple tools that we need 7 8 socket and ratchet, inch and a quarter socket and ratchet, uh, 8 millimeter on a quarter inch drive handle. Couple of flat blade screwdrivers, a uh, dial indicator. It's about the only thing special that we need. First thing we're going to start with is our governor springs. They come in a kit. I'll show them to you once I get them out of the bag here. But uh, they come in a kit. Our governor springs live right here underneath this cover. As you can see the piece of safety wire right here. Take our cutters, next thing we're going to want to do, this is our fuel shutoff lever, there's an 8 millimeter bolt right here. Carefully work this off. I'll explain to you why here in just a minute. There is a small woodruff key right here. Do not want to lose that. Ours is rusted into place, so there shouldn't be any danger of it falling out. Next, grab our 7 8 socket. Before we go any further, this is already loose because we had it out when we took the pump off the engine. A 15 16 socket, take this little plug out. If you haven't already had it out, have a heavy catch pan here because you're going to lose just a little bit shy of a quarter oil. We need to pull our flag out so we can turn the pump over. Set that off to the side. Now we'll put our inch to quarter socket onto our nut in the front of our injection pump. And we'll rotate it over until we can see the governor springs in there. Once again, until you remove that flag, do not turn this over. Tighten our nut up a little bit. Okay, here's our first pair of governor springs. Take our dial indicator. And we're going to measure this stem and this groove. Stick that down the groove. .098. I'm going to write that number down on the bench so I don't forget it. .098. Take our flat blade. Yeah, yeah. Flat blade screwdriver. Let's 
turn these off. That's good when there's no tension on it. Take our magnet. Take it off that way. Set the nut off the way. Top container. Now, you see inside there, there's a large diameter spring and then three other springs. The large diameter spring is going to stay. We're going to take everything else out. Need to pull out the shims. I know I said this spring stays, but I needed to make sure. But I got everything out of there. So put that back in. Your kit comes with three springs and a bottom retainer. Just take the whole stack, drop it in as one unit. Easiest way to do it. Reuse our top retainer. Thread our nut back on. Using a combination of a magnet and a flat blade screwdriver, tighten it down until we feel some resistance. One. Two. Three clicks, dial indicator, one thirteen, we went too far. They claim you can turn this three clicks and get it back where you go. Now I felt what I thought was three clicks. You can see when I checked it with the micrometer, we went in too far. You've got to be very careful when you do that because if you get this too tight, uh, your idle quality is going to suck. There's even a chance this engine could run away. So while they say you can do it without the dial indicator, I'm going to tell you I don't recommend it. Dial indicators are cheap. You can get them at Harbor Freight. That's where this one came from. You just need something to double check everything. Now, we just spin it over because there's another set of springs on the other side. I wanted to take a minute to show you what we have here on the bench. What you get in your governor spring kit. We already put one side in, so basically just double what you see here. This kit is called a 3,000-4,000 RPM governor spring kit. Why do I need a governor spring kit, you ask? Well, the factory P-Pump, I believe, is governed at 2,700 RPM. It actually starts defueling at 2400 RPM. With the performance mods and everything, we're going to do with this. 
the engine's actually going to be more capable and have the uh, make peak, peak power and torque at a higher RPM and also top speed of the truck you know 2400 RPM with 410 gears is not going to be a very highway friendly truck so we, we want the RPM for that um, what makes this a 3k 4k kit is you have three springs here if you only want 3000 RPM just omit this little guy here and put these two in you'll have 3000 RPM we're going to go with the 4000 RPM kit because the power truck's geared our intended purpose and everything it's a manual transmission truck we want to be able to reach that higher RPM not that we're going to be driving it that hard but you know things happen but before you put 4000 RPM in your truck I need to forewarn you the, the valve springs will not handle that kind of RPM you'll float the valves and when you do that very real possibility of valves hit piston and that just makes for a bad day so um, it's best to buy the kit that comes with the governor springs and the 4000 rpm capable valve springs which are 60 pounds heavier than stock we'll get into that when we do the cylinder head but i just wanted to show you right here what this comes with and then we'll, we'll mod the head later so Essentially, you have bottom retainer, outer spring, middle spring, small inner spring. Throw it together, that's your governor's purpose. And I just put them in upside down. flashlight was handy. We'll use it. We'll just turn it around so we see our flag. Past us. Flags right there in the middle. Normal operation. This flag that is behind this 15 16 cap. This side with the brass pin goes in towards the pump. Then this steel with the little fork on it is inside the cap. That screws in. Pump remains or is able to run under normal operation. Anytime you go to remove this pump and you want it in time, if this were on the uh, engine itself, you would set everything at top dead center, see this little flag sticking out inside here, which I can't get the camera in there to show you or I would. And then this flag goes in, locks on that, and then you just snug this cap on. That keeps the pump in time. I'm not going to fully tighten that yet because unless we get the engine together and everything, we're going to need to turn that flag back over. The governor springs are installed. We're not going to worry about putting the safety wire back on. It's not really a safety wire, it's anti tampering. Well, that didn't work because we tampered with it anyway. The next mod that we're going to be doing lives underneath this AFC housing. That's air fuel control. It's called a fuel plate. And here is our new fuel.
steel plate. I'll explain that a little more once we get the old one out, how it works. Uh, this housing is held on by four bolts. These two right here came off when we removed the fuel shutoff solenoid. We got another one right here. And then this fourth one is a tamper proof screw where the head twists off at the factory. We're going to have to get creative to remove that. Uh, some guys will cut a slot with a chisel or a cutoff wheel. We're going to try the uh, sharp chisel method first. If that doesn't work, we'll get out the uh, die grinder, buzz the slot in there, and pull it off with the screwdriver. Take that one out. Get a hammer and a chisel. Every chisel I own is junk. I have an uncle. That's a damn good blacksmith. And he's been on me about coming into his shop to learn to trade. Maybe that would make a good project. Make some chisels. Chisel method for the win. Throw that piece of crap out. Get us a new bolt out of the bolt bin. want to give up. Okay, after we fight the screws out, we'll set them off to the side. We'll remove our fuel plate. Okay, we got our factory fuel plate out. Here, is our factory plate. The way this works is a really simplified version. There's a rack lever that comes out and strikes this profile on this plate. That controls how much fuel at a given time goes into the engine. This is the plate that we're going to replace it with. You can see the difference. See that one versus that one. See the difference in the profile. Now you can, if you're really cheap, get on the internet and they will there will be a, a diagram anywhere. Just Google 12 valve fuel plate and it will show you how to grind this stock plate to a certain profile. 
some guys will grind them completely away. I believe that's what they call a zero. Some guys will remove these plates totally. But if you do that, uh, you lose a lot of drivability. Black smoke becomes a problem. This is what they refer to as a number six fuel plate. My research, this is one step above a factory 215 pump, so that's what we're shooting for. Our injectors that we're going to go with are a step above a factory 215 engine. We're going to go with a fuel plate above the 215. One other thing you can do, if you want just a little bit of performance out of your 12 valve, you notice the slots on that, or the the holes on that plate, rather, are slotted. Take, pull your AFC housing, undo your two screws, and just simply slide this forward. That'll give you a little more horsepower, a little more smoke, but it's cheap, easy, and simple. This pump, or this plate, this plate is also slotted too, so we're going to put it, we're going to put it full forward too. Why not? And if it's too much, then we'll we'll slide it back. We got another tamper-proof screw. We're going to remove that because there's a screw behind here, the uh, pre-boost fueling screw or the smoke screw. We're going to need to adjust that um, once we have the engine in the truck running and driving. So I'm going to take care of that. Right now, well, it's easy to get to. Uh, if we're going to do any more than that, we'll just hand it over to our pump guy. But for now, that's what we're going to do. Uh, next thing we're going to do this is slap a coat of paint on it and install it on that short block over there. But that's another video for another day. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned a thing or two. Like I said before, drop me a comment, smash that subscribe button, show that like button some love, and. Uh, I'll catch you next week in Rico's Garage. Later.